Now, welcome to another edition of Battle of the Heroes and Villains, where this time we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll for Revan, and then comparing those results to all the other characters we've done thus far, before I then read and respond to some of your comments. But before we get to any and all of that, you can, of course, already nominate and or vote for which character we do next. Just head down and respond to my pinned comment below with a character name or vote with a thumbs up if the one you'd like to see is already listed. Whichever comment then gets the most thumbs up in the next 24 hours or so will be the winner and the character we do next. Okay, and now on to the results for Revan, where we'll see that 70% of people thought he was an A tier character, 19% then said B, 7% gave him a C, which left 1% to give him a D, and a final 3% to give him an F. Which means when we do all the math here and consider A a score of 5 and F a score of 1, that Revan ends up with an average score of 4.52, which puts him into 11th place overall and just a hundredth of a point behind both Qui-Gon Jinn and Han Solo. And honestly, I thought he might finish just a bit higher than this, though I am biased because I do love the character, or most aspects of the character, because yeah, there are some rather interesting or odd parts in his story, which I'm sure we'll discuss in a little bit. Anyway, for the longest time, I've been meaning to make a comprehensive video going into this character. Again, he is one of my favorites, and so hopefully doing this video will light a fire underneath me to finally get to doing that one. But for now, I'm going to get to the comments and mostly let you all have your say without too much input from me, because that's really what the character is all about. He, or she, is or originally was almost entirely the expression of the person playing them. And so let's just kick this off, as we always do, with the top-rated comment, which this time came to us from Ethan from Manon, who said, People say he's overrated, but he truly isn't. He's a character that is playing 4D chess while everyone else is playing checkers. He was always good, but he had to make hard decisions and sacrifices for the sake of the Republic and those he cared for. Not to mention his design is so badass. He really suffers from the shortcomings of the Jedi firsthand, as he was always treated differently by them. He was lied and manipulated by both the Jedi and Sith alike. Even in death, he managed to protect Bastila, and his family for the rest of their lives. He's not invincible either, as that is shown many times. He's my favorite EU character, and I could ramble on for much longer, but I'll save everyone the hassle. 10 out of 10. And I mean, I myself always talk about what a true Jedi is supposed to be, or what they're supposed to do, which is follow the will of the Force above all else. They do what must be done no matter what to see that the greater good is carried out or preserved, which is the main reason why Jedi don't allow themselves attachments, they don't want anything to interfere with their ability to do what is best for the whole, or over what is best for just themselves. And Anakin saving a Sith Lord who just proclaimed himself Emperor of the Galaxy just for the chance to save his wife is a really good example of this. Anyway, before I get off track, it's always interesting to put good characters in moral dilemmas to see how they act or how far they're willing to go in order to do what is ultimately right, even if it means committing a great evil in the process or having to choose between the lesser of two evils. Which is one of the things I love about Revan's story, that he's always done what he must do, or at least that's kind of how it once was portrayed until some changes to it were made, but let's not get into that right now. And it's Kreia that basically sums this all up perfectly when she says, perhaps Revan never fell. The difference between a fall and a sacrifice is sometimes difficult, but I feel that Revan understood that difference more than anyone knew. The galaxy would have fallen if Revan had not gone to war. Perhaps he became the Dark Lord out of necessity to prevent a greater evil. And this, of course, does have some Anakin vibes or feel to it. It's similar in many respects, and a lot of people in the comments did indeed bring up how similar these two characters are. And perhaps, though I don't think Anakin was aware of it or made any kind of conscious decision, but perhaps he was always meant to fall, though I don't personally think that's the case. But perhaps he had to suffer as he did and fall to the dark side, because in that moment in Return of the Jedi, that was the only way he could ever defeat Sidious once and for all, or that anyone could defeat him, until, of course, he comes back from the dead and Rey defeats him in The Rise of Skywalker, but let's not get into that. Though speaking of the sequels, I do think it would have been interesting if some of the early theories about Kylo Ren would have been right, that he purposely fell to the dark side in order to try and stop Snoke, that the reason he feels the pull to the light and why he's afraid Snoke senses it is because he's actually trying to kill him in order to restore balance, in order to finish what his grandfather started. But anyway here, I told myself I wasn't going to blab too much in this video, so let's get to some more of your comments, starting with this one from JC Denton 2187 who said, I feel like this is a bit unfair since Revan's personality is almost entirely up to how the player roleplays him or her. But the story surrounding Revan is pretty great in my opinion. 
When I first played Knights of the Old Republic, yeah, the twist was pretty awesome to my teenage brain at the time, and I still think it's pretty a pretty solid story. Revan's canon arc of becoming a Jedi again is good, but I also think the alternate path of him becoming an even more powerful Sith Lord after his return is well done too. And at the risk of babbling too much yet again, I'll tell a quick story about the moment I realized just how amazing the first Knights of the Old Republic game is or was, and how amazing of a character Revan is. Okay, so back when the game first came out, which I think is the summer of 2003, but don't quote me on that, I was working all the time and not really keeping up with much outside of my job, so I knew virtually nothing about this game going into it, other than it was like based on the D&D D20 system, which I thought was awesome and was one of the things that hooked me immediately, and also that it was a new Star Wars game, of course, which means, yeah, I was going to buy it and play it pretty much no matter what. So anyway, I ended up starting to play it and called in sick to work for a couple days in a row in order to power through the whole game. And not long after that, I was talking to my brother about the game, who also played it and loved it. And we were talking about the story and everything, and then we started to talk about the ending. And he started to talk about how he kills Malik and becomes a new Lord of the Sith, and how Bastila becomes his apprentice, and that he made Zalbar kill Mission. And at this point, I was like, what in the... F are you even talking about right now? Because, and not to sound like I'm a boy scout here, but I thought part of the point of the game was you had to resist falling to the dark side and you'd fail if you did. I didn't realize you could just play the game however the hell you wanted and ultimately get a different dark side ending if you did. And that you could also basically kill most of your friends as well. And so, as great as the game is just as a game, which includes the amazing story and the characters, I really love that it got to the core of Star Wars and it put it right in there. That it allows you to make these decisions that, ke that can lead you down the dark or the light path. I mean, that's really what Star Wars is all about. The inner struggle between good and evil that we all face. Not to mention, I think I learned a little bit about my brother that day who apparently just fully embraced the dark side from the word go in that game. Alright, now I'm really mostly just going to read comments for the rest of the video, starting with this one from Nick Cook, who said, His design is top-notch, but his feats are in a league of their own. He mastered being a Jedi, he mastered being a Sith. He was able to wage and win a war against the Mandalorians. Revan was one of the most prolific characters in the history of the galaxy. He is an easy A in my book. Then there's also this one from NSARJ, who said, I can't grade Revan. He, she is someone different to everyone. Sure, you could grade based on the content outside the KOTOR games, but A, I think that diminishes the mythos and mystery that is Revan, and B, so far most of the content has been pretty crap. To me, the story of Revan that unfolded before my eyes when I played the game would easily earn an A, but again, my Revan is different from your Revan. You can grade a character, you can't grade a legend. We also here had this one from Odin, the German Shepherd, who said, I never played the game, but I read Revan's book and I wasn't impressed. And yeah, without getting too far into it here, let's just say the book does not give you the best take on the character, especially if it's your first take. Not to mention it kind of retcons things, especially from the second game. Plus the book, which is called Revan, is really not even about him all that much. There are other characters that kind of take precedence over him. And so I'd highly, highly recommend anyone interested in learning more about Revan that you start with the games and you go from there if you want. Alright, and moving along now, we have this comment from PK Extra who said, The character is really being cheated out by not being more mainstream. He's such a fan favorite for Legends and EU fans that average fans don't have a clue. Then there's also this one from Eben Hawk Podcast who said, Oh, hello there. I have been waiting for this. In our podcast, my co-host and I talk about Revan in every episode. There are many Revans. Each fan has their own interpretation of who he or she is. Then there is the old canonical Revan. And then there is the Revan that is yet to be canon, but will one day be. Revan's character has a great twist and arc. He has experience with the light and dark. And I think at the end of his journey, I kind of discount the Old Republic, I think he becomes like Qui-Gon. I really think Disney could make an excellent trilogy of films adapting the first KOTOR games. Then we also have this pretty straightforward comment from Electro Meg Nick, who simply said, If Disney dare touches Revan, I'm gonna scream. And while I get ready to scream, because I do think it'll happen eventually, it's really only a matter of time. For better or worse, they're not going to do nothing with a big-name character like Revan. In fact, he's already back in the official canon, because in The Rise of Skywalker, there's a legion of Sith troopers named after him. And though I'm not sure if that's to allude to an imminent return elsewhere, 
or if it was just a nod to the fans. But my guess would be it's the latter. It's just a nod to the fans, but that doesn't mean more Revan isn't coming. And the way I personally hope it happens is if they remaster the first two Knights of the Old Republic games and then create a third game, one that arguably gives a better end to his story than we got elsewhere. Either that or make a trilogy out of it with Keanu Reeves as Revan. I'd also take that, though I don't really see that happening, but who knows, I guess. But really, I think the absolute best way to handle him going forward in the new canon is to do very little beyond remastering the two games and possibly creating that third game, to mainly leave his story forever shrouded in mystery, to leave it as a lost legend, if you will, so that people can always feel like their Revan, the one they played in the games, is the real Revan. All right, and now on to just a few final comments here. But before we do, honorable mention has to go to this one from James Wright, which was really good, but just a bit too long to read. But do feel free to pause it now and take a minute or two to read it yourself if you'd like. Anyway, now on to this comment from Edwin Palacio, who said, Savior, conqueror, hero, villain. You are all these things, Revan, and then you are nothing. In the end, you belong neither to the light or the darkness. You will forever stand alone. Then this one from C.W. Simpson Productions, who said, The Revan reveal is one of the greatest twists in video game history. We also then have this one from C.T.Y.O.R.O., who said, Revan is easily an A-tier character for me. I mean, I haven't even played the games he's in, and I love his character. First off, it's an amazing design. He's got a Mandalorian helmet and armor combined with force wielder robes, have a favorite lightsaber color. Chances are he's used it purple, blue, red, and green. Dual wielding them adds even more a cool factor and showcases his skills. I personally prefer his blue and purple combo for Jedi and purple with red for Sith, as I'm not the biggest fan of green lightsabers. And I think his purple one makes him stand out. He has such power, intellect, and reputation that even other powerful Sith greatly respect him. Plus, he looks like Keanu Reeves. Next up then, we have this one from Defect Tech, who said, The only thing I don't like about Revan is how they killed him off in Star Wars The Old Republic. And before I get to the final comment here, just let me take a quick moment to say thank you for all the great comments this week. There were many, many of them that easily could have and should have been in this video. Anyway, I'll just leave you all with the final comment, which comes to us from the Wilhelm Scream, who said, Revan is his own oxymoron. He is every fan, yet also his own character with a journey in the light and dark, but he is flawed and deserving of an A as he represents the entire Old Republic era, a fantastic, interesting, and complicated hero, a knight who fails and finds his way again, and with one of the best twists in all of Star Wars and games ever, A. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about Revan, or what I or anyone else had to say about him in this video, or you can nominate and or vote for which character we should do next, or you can even take to the comments to tell me to make that comprehensive Revan video already. Whatever the case may be, do leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.